Hey guys, welcome back to another Sunday School class. I hope everybody had a good time last Sunday during the hike. I know I really enjoyed it. I like getting out in God's creation and be able to enjoy nature. And uh, it was good to be with you guys and still be able to do some social distancing. So, uh, and it was good to have a lesson too there, a little devotional. I hope that uh, uh, that and these Sunday School lessons are, are helping you out, are encouraging you. Um, and I hope that you've been able to watch these Sunday School lessons. And if you haven't gotten to watch the past two lessons, um, before you watch this one, go back and watch those lessons. It's beginning our series about what faith is. And we've talked about since the beginning, uh, since the first one, what faith is, um, why it's so important to have faith, where faith comes from, all these things. And at the end of the first lesson, we covered some memory verses, four if I'm not mistaken. And I hope that you're working on memorizing those verses. Those are verses that will help build your faith and ones that you can kind of hang on to uh, throughout your Christian walk. So uh, continue working on those uh, if you have started. And if you haven't, start working on memorizing those verses. Go back to the first lesson and, uh, and revisit that. But today we're picking up where we where we left off from last week, which was what faith looks like, or um, how we kind of can identify faith, or what it looks like. Uh, we talked about how faith uh, it looks like obedience. Okay, when we're walking in faith towards God, it's going to lead to obedience. We talked, uh, we covered Noah last week, and we covered Abraham. Noah believed the promise of God, or he believed in the command of God, he believed in the promise of God, and he was fully assured of this promise, so, as God commanded him to, he built an ark, um, and all this was done by faith. Abraham, when he was told to leave, leave his hometown, leave his home area, and go to a place that God would show him, he followed the command of God by faith. And he believed in the promise of God that he was going to lead him into a land. Okay, And he also made a promise to him that he was going to be a father of many nations. And that all the world would be blessed in his seed. Okay, And that's what we're going to talk about today. We talked about obedience last week. And we're going to continue with obedience today. How this shows faith. Um, what faith looks like. And... Uh, not only is it obedience, but we're going to take it a step further today. Um, so we're going to talk about, let's see, get your Bibles out to Hebrews chapter 11. This is where we've been basing our uh, entire uh, series of faith off of, is out of Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to start reading in verse 17. And it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was tried or tested, okay, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Now, Isaac was a child of promise, which is what it was talking about, about right there. You know, when God said he was going to make him a father of many nations, that was kind of strange for God to make that kind of promise when Abraham no ch had no children to begin with. But the Lord eventually gave Abraham and Sarah a son. His name was Isaac. So this was a child of promise. He was a miracle, in a sense, because they were, they were very old when they had this child. So Isaac was an Ab uh, a child of promise. Okay? And now... We see that Abraham, by faith, offered up Isaac. What's he talking about, offered up Isaac? So we're going to go back in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, and read about Isaac and what he's talking about right here. And we've covered it in our Sunday school lesson, or in Sunday school before, before all the uh, pandemic and everything hit. And we've talked about this story. And it's in Genesis chapter 22, and we're going to start reading at verse one. I believe this is going to be a fairly short lesson. So, In verse 1, in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt or test Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, 
here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into a land uh, of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took his and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into a place which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here, abide ye here with the ass and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So the Lord is commanding Abraham, I want you to take your only son and I want you to go offer him as a burnt offering unto me. And Abraham goes. He just goes. Okay? And they get to the place, or pretty close to the place, where God's going to have him uh, perform the sacrifice. And he tells the young men that went with them as servants to help. Uh, he said, you stay here with the animals. Me and my son will go worship. Okay, picking up in verse 6, he says, And Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering, of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So that kind of tells me Isaac knew there was a sacrifice coming, but he was expecting a normal sacrifice, which would have been a lamb. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon thy, the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, and seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by the horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount that uh, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So we see the story here where God had called Abraham as a test, and we see that it was only a test. He never intended for um, Abraham to truly kill his son, but he was testing him to see whether or not he would withhold him from the Lord. Um, you see, God calls us to, to, to give all to him, and he doesn't want us to withhold anything from him. Um, so he called him to offer up Isaac, his son. Now, he goes to do this by faith. Okay, remember all this we're talking about is by faith. So, obedience here, or, or excuse me, faith right here led to him obeying God. But see, there was a catch there. He knew that God was calling him to sacrifice his son. He knew that this was the command of God, so he was willing to be obedient to go do this. But there was no specific promise. Rather than God giving a promise right here with the command, like we, we saw in the other lessons, you know, uh, with Noah, God commanded him to build an ark, and he promised that him and his household would be saved. With Abraham, he said, Go into a place that I will show thee, and I will make you... Uh, I will give you an inheritance. I will make you a father of many nations. There was promises with the command. Well, right here we we don't see a promise to go with the command. Uh, but rather we almost see something the opposite. Uh, right here, 
it almost seemed as though God's promise was going to be taken away by doing what he was commanded to do. Because it was through Isaac that God was going to fulfill his previous promises. The promises that God had already made to Abraham were going to be fulfilled through Isaac. And you say, how was it going to be fulfilled through Isaac? Well, he was going to make him a father of many nations. This was going to be through his offspring, which had to start somewhere, and it started with Isaac. So if he was going to be a father of many nations, it had to come through Isaac. So if he was to sacrifice Isaac, how was God going to fill, fulfill his previous promises? So Abraham almost... I would imagine this was a little bit of a struggle for Abraham to think, how is God going to fulfill his promises by what is he, what he's commanding me to do right here? I'm going to cut off the promises of God, or I'm going to stop the promises of God from happening if I, if I obey his command. Yet Abraham, somewhere along the line, uh, somewhere along the way, knew or had faith that God was still able to perform His promise even when He didn't understand. And, and that's the thing I really want to draw out here today is sometimes we don't understand how God is going to fulfill His promises or we don't understand the plans of God and all that He is doing and what He's commanding us to do. We don't understand how this is going to uh, be good, how it's going to play out in the end. We don't understand. Uh, Yet, just as Abraham did, we need to be faithful and believe God that what he has promised, he is able to perform. Uh, even when it seems like it doesn't make any sense. It, doesn't, it didn't make any sense to Abraham. God, you're telling me to kill the promise. How are you going to fulfill it? It didn't make any sense. He didn't understand. Yet, because of faith. Because of faith, he was still obedient, even when something didn't make sense to him. Now, I want, I want to make a, a pretty clear right here, that faith is not doing something when you don't understand the command of God. You see, Abraham understood the command of God here clearly. God wanted him to go sacrifice his son. He understood that clearly. So, the command of God should be understood clearly. And then we obey that command, okay? But to obey something that we're not too sure of, that's not faith. So don't don't go doing something, well, I think this is what God wants me to do. And Will said sometimes we don't always understand God's ways, so we need to act in faith and go ahead and do it. No, God's command and God's will is going to be clear to us. Okay, so don't do something when it is unclear to you what God is wanting you to do. In fact, that, that's not faith at all. That's, uh, that's walking foolishly. Because faith is being assured, being thoroughly convinced, going back to what faith is, to be thoroughly convinced of what God is telling you to do, or what God is revealing to you, and being thoroughly convinced that He's going to fulfill those promises. Okay? So don't don't misunderstand me and say, well, I don't fully understand what God's wanting me to do, so I'm going to go forward any. No, don't go forward with that. God will make it known. He will make it clear what it is he is wanting you to do. And God made it clear to Abraham what he wanted him to do. What Abraham probably didn't fully understand was how God was going to fulfill the promise. He was still thoroughly convinced and assured what God was saying to do. And he was still thoroughly convinced and assured that God was going to be able to fulfill the promise. But it was the in-between that sometimes we don't understand. And we don't know how God is going to fulfill his promises in our lives by, by doing what he's calling us to do. But this is where we need to obey anyways. So... We need to be like Abraham right here. And faith will lead us to be obedient even when we don't understand. 
even when we don't understand. So uh, that's, that's going to wrap it up for the obedience part of what faith looks like. Faith looks like obedience, and obedience even when it just doesn't make sense to us, or when we don't understand. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish just a little bit right here, and back in Hebrews. Hebrews, we'll, we'll start back at 17. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tested or tried, he offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said in Isaac, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And it says, Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So it's saying right there in verse 19 that Abraham, he believed God, accounting that God. Right there in verse 19 it says, Accounting that God, he believed that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead, even if if he killed his own son right here in obedience to God's command, that God was able to fulfill the promise, even if it meant he had to raise Isaac from the dead, God somehow was going to fulfill his promise. And, and I urge you to, that we walk in the same kind of faith, the same kind of assurance that no matter what, you know, uh, we don't understand all things. But when we understand what God is telling us to do, and we understand what He's promised, when the in-between doesn't make much sense, know that God is somehow, some way, able to fulfill His promises. Even if that means raising somebody from the dead. Even if that means, uh, uh, well, I don't know. God is able to do all things. But, our faith will lead us to believe that he is able to do something that we don't even understand. Because when it comes down to it, the Bible tells us that nothing is impossible with God. He, he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt under bondage. And when they came to the Red Sea, the children of Israel thought, well, this is it, we're going to die. There's no way out of this. Yet God was still able to make a way by parting the Red Sea and allowing them to go across in dry land to safety. He made a way when there seemed to be no way. And Abraham had faith that God was going to make a way to fulfill the promise even when there seemed to be no way. So obedience leads to faith, or faith leads to obedience. It's going to show through by obedience and obedience even when we don't understand everything. So, I hope this was helpful. And I'm looking forward to next time. Until then, uh, I want you to be working on those memory verses. Uh, we're going to continue to look at what faith looks like and when it's played out. Uh, the last two lessons we've talked about obedience. It, it looks like obedience. Faith leads us to obey God's command. Um, so next week we're going to talk about some more. What else faith looks like? It's more than just obedience. Uh, it's, it's much, much more. So guys, I love you. I uh, look forward to seeing you soon. We'll see you next Sunday. And until then, uh, bless God and God bless you.